This is the third video in a series of videos about using a computer program called Mathematica for understanding and solving what are called ordinary differential equations. We're focused right now on the simplest type of ordinary differential equations. They're called first order scalar equations. In the first couple of videos, we focused on using these four important Mathematica commands. The first called dsolve solves differential equations. The second called plot will plot functions. The third vector plot will plot not only vector fields, but also a simpler kind of field called a slope field, and show is a command that combines different graphic objects. In the first two videos, we focused on what I call pure antiderivative problems. In this video, we're going to look at a more complicated kind of example called an autonomous differential equation. And here is our example. Look this over. Here's the differential equation we're focused on, dy dt equals 3 times y. In the first two videos, the right-hand side just depended on t. In fact, in the last video, the differential equation was dy dt equals t squared minus 1. We were after a function whose derivative was always t squared minus 1. That can be found by integrating. t cubed over 3 minus t plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant, is going to be the general solution when the equation is dy dt equals t squared minus 1. However, this time, the right-hand side doesn't depend on t. There's no t's on the right-hand side. We just have the dependent variable y, 3 times y is the right-hand side. You do not solve this equation by integrating the right-hand side right away to say the answer might be 3 halves y squared plus c. That is not what you do. Instead, you need to think about this right. You are after y is a function of t whose derivative dy dt always equals 3 times the function. Think of y as being the function. And again, this equation is saying you are after a function whose derivative, dy dt, always equals 3 times itself, 3 times the function. Pause the video, take a moment to think about that, and then come back. I hope you can figure out the general solution on your own based on what I just described. If you're after a fun the most general kind of function whose derivative is always 3 times itself, it's going to be an arbitrary constant c times e to the 3t power where c, again, is an arbitrary constant. Does that make sense? Why? And hopefully it makes sense to you. It's because of the chain rule. When you take the derivative of this function, you'll get an extra factor of 3 coming out from the derivative of the inside function being 3t. Its derivative is 3, so you're going to get 3 times c times e to the 3t when you differentiate this three times the function itself. That's what it means to solve this differential equation in this case. We can check this symbolic and, symbolically on Mathematica in a few different ways. We could first define a function y of t to equal c times e to the 3t. I need to use a lowercase c here, whereas I'm using an uppercase c here. Don't worry about that. Capital E is necessary here to use the number e. There is a special lowercase e you can do by doing escape, double e, escape, to also represent the number e, but I'm just going to use capital E as a default. If I differentiate this function, what do I get? I get 3c e to the 3t, just like I said before. And if I take 3 times this function, what do I get? I get the same thing. That's what it means for this function to solve that differential equation, dy dt equals 3y. The left-hand side, the derivative, always equals the right-hand side three times the function. Okay, The function does explicitly depend on t, but the right-hand side of the differential equation, when written by hand, does not. Let's double-check this with dsolve, though if I'm going to use dsolve and also still use the variable y, I'm going to need to clear y before I use dsolve, like that. Now I use dsolve. dsolve has three arguments. You've got the differential equation. You're solving in Mathematica. You need to use double equal signs. You do need to specify to Mathematica that this is a function of t, so I'm not going to type a 3y for the right-hand side. I'm, instead, I'm going to type a 3 times y of t. Square brackets are necessary for function arguments. The function indeed is y of t, and I'm finding the solution with respect to the independent variable t. This is the syntax that you need. And there we go. There's our general solution. c of 1 represents Mathematica's arbitrary constant that I called c. How about the initial value problem? How about making sure the function goes to the point whose coordinates are t comma y equals 0 comma 2? We want y of 0 to equal 2. Think about that. I hope you realize since e to the 0 is 1, that c must be 2 
to satisfy this initial value problem. The unique solution of the initial value problem is, let's copy and paste this to save a little time, replace C with 2. That one function is the unique solution of the initial value problem. It solves the differential equation and it also satisfies the initial condition. Let's double check that on Mathematica as well. Um, I can do, let's just do dsolve here. I can add my initial condition into dsolve by putting the differential equation and the initial condition in a list with a comma between the differential equation and the initial condition. Again, double equal signs are necessary. There we go, there's our unique solution to the initial value problem consisting of the differential equation and the initial condition. Now I want to plot this unique solution along with what's called the slope field for the differential equation. I'm going to again clear y. I'm going to define a function to represent the right hand side of my differential equation. It doesn't matter if I use the y here as well. Um, the right hand side again just de depends on y. It's 3y. That's going to be the function that I define f of y to be. In the first two videos I defined an f of t function to represent the right hand side like t squared minus 1 in the last video. Again the syntax looks like you see here. I'm going to combine two plots. Vector plot is going to generate the slope field. Plot will graph the function. I need to remind you what a slope field means. I will do that here in a few minutes. Show combines these plots. To plot the vector of the slope field, you use a list with the first entry being a 1 and the second entry being the right-hand side of the differential equation, f of y in this case. Let's t let t go from negative 4 to 4. Let's let y go from negative 4 to 4 as well. Let's add some options in here like vector style. Let's make it thick red, say. Vector scale. The option I always pick here is 0.03, comma, 0.03, comma, none. It makes the slope field look nice. It needs to be in a list. Sorry, it's slow here. Uh, vector points you might want to add to graph uh, more than a 15 by 15 grid. You might want to make this arrow 25 in my... This is really slow. I'm sorry for this. It's not usually like this. Hopefully we can live with this here. There we go, 25. Plot the function. The function is again 2e to the 3t. I'll just type it in like this. Wow, this is really slow. Uh, t goes from negative 4 to 4. Plot style. Let's make this one thick and blue. I think I won't bother plotting the initial condition, but I do want to get rid of the frame this will generate. Frame arrow false. Axes arrow true. Axes label arrow t comma y. Let's make those bigger. All right, I think this is ready to enter here. There we go. There's our slope field and there's our solution. You can see the solution is following the slope field, which is the basic idea. What does that mean to follow the slope field? It means anytime the solution curve passes through one of these slope marks, say the midpoint, that little slope mark, that little line segment will be a little mini tangent line to the curve. Its slope will equal to the slope of the curve at that point. This is close to being on the curve right there. They're basically matching up. This is different than the slope field for the first two, for the, for the last video, which was constant along vertical lines. Here we have slope marks that are constant along horizontal lines. Let me actually reduce this down to 20. There we go. These are constant along horizontal lines because the system is autonomous. The right-hand side function, f of y, 3y, the right-hand side of the differential equation, just depends on y. There's no explicit dependence on t. That means any time you plug in a point into that right-hand side function to draw the little line segment, its slope just depends on y. It's three times the y-coordinate of the point. Uh, say the lines right about here are at a y-coordinate of y equals 1. You plug y equals 1 into this function, f of y, which is 3 times y, you will get 3. These slope marks, these little line segments centered at y equals 1, all have a slope of 3. And the differential equation and the solutions are constructed in such a way that any time, uh, they're saying, this is saying the slope at any point along the solution curve is 3 times the y-coordinate of the point. That's why the solution follows the slope field. 
Again, this is constant along horizontal lines at constant values of y because the right-hand side just depends on y. It's autonomous. Horizontal translations of solutions will be other solutions in this case, whereas in the previous video, vertical translations were. I also want you to note that along the t-axis where y is 0, there would be what's called a constant solution, an equilibrium solution. y equals 0, that constant function would also solve the differential equation, and in fact it's a very important solution of the differential equation, satisfying the initial condition y of 0 equals 0. I'll consider another example similar to this in the next video.